Hi, I'm Sarah. I've noticed that my next door neighbors are sometimes launching a drone from their backyard. I'm not worried about them spying on me because they're just a bunch of pot smoking hippies. Nice people, but losers. At least they won't cause trouble somewhere else when they're playing with that thing. Picture this. You're in Canada where cannabis is legal and you've just taken a leisurely stroll through the clouds of smoke. But did you know that your next drone flight might be grounded for a whopping 28 days? Today, we're unraveling the high-flying mystery behind the 28-day policy for cannabis consumption and aircraft operation. Whether you're a licensed pro or a recreational pilot navigating the sub-250 gram skies, this is information you can't afford to miss. So buckle up, because we're about to explore how the haze in the air could have a lasting impact on your drone adventures. Let's take flight into the regulations that might just have you seeing clouds in a whole new light. <laughs> Hey there, drone enthusiasts. Welcome back to The One, where we explore the skies and unravel the untold stories of the drone world. I am George Schlackek, and today we're diving into a topic that is flying under the radar for many drone operators, especially those who enjoy the occasional puff or sip. I'm Ralph, Sarah's husband. I'm not worried about anyone spying on us neither. But here is the thing, drones travel across the air and can potentially cause a lot of damage. Those guys may or may not be stoned while they're in control of this thing. Isn't there a rule for that? Sarah and I will look into it a bit more. Now, we all know that drones have taken the world by storm, capturing breathtaking landscapes and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. But what if I told you that there's a hidden regulation hovering above us, one that could ground your drone dreams for a significant amount of time? CAR 901.19 covers crew readiness. It mentions alcohol and that no person shall act as a crew member within 12 hours after consuming an alcoholic beverage. This is a very clear rule. You can actually time the 12 hours and there's no if or but. This is how all the rules should be. We're used to enforcement of the alcohol regulations when it comes to other forms of transportation. They go as far as testing your blood alcohol level. If you're anywhere in Canada, you probably noticed that there are now about as many cannabis stores in Canadian cities and towns as there are liquor stores. Smoking weed is legal and people here are doing it. Everywhere. Otherwise there wouldn't be such a huge market. Walk through my neighborhood any evening of the week and you'll likely smell the stuff. It's ubiquitous in Canada. Now you might be wondering where the Canadian aviation regulations cover cannabis. When starting research on this topic, I was vaguely aware of a 28-day rule. According to Transport Canada, this is aligned with the best available science and is consistent with other government departments' approach to legalization of cannabis. It states that this considers how the body gets rid of cannabis, how long it can be detected, and when the brain returns to normal after using cannabis. But where do you find this rule or policy? Who is it for and who is actually aware of it? I became aware of it when I took a self-study program on the Transport Canada website to meet the recency requirement for my license after two years. Well, keep watching. We'll get to it. 
a while ago I had a chat with a friend who admitted to flying a DJI Mini 2 under the influence. As we all know, the CAR are not considering a sub-250 gram drone in the same manner as the heavier ones, and many of the strict regulations become recommendations in that category. I'm sure it's not recommended to operate even a small drone while being stoned. Canadian Aviation Regulation 901.19 goes on to say that no person shall act as a crew member of an RPAS system while using any drug that impairs the person's faculties to the extent that aviation safety or the safety of any person is endangered or likely to be endangered. I don't see any mention of cannabis. What does that mean? Are there so many stoners at Transport Canada that they simply want to avoid clarity to cover their own asses? <laughs> Where do you find this policy, as they call it, anyways? Quite frankly, I couldn't without referring back to this recency self-study program. But I eventually found it, and the link is in the description below the video. It goes like this. On June 3rd, 2019, Transport Canada announced a new policy stating that flight crew, including pilots, are prohibited from the use of cannabis for at least 28 days before being on duty. But this is where it gets wishy-washy. As a recreational drone pilot, you're not really on duty. You are, however, considered a pilot. There's a Q&A section that covers this exactly. Who does the 28-day policy apply to? This is where it gets interesting, as the answer here is, to all flight crew and flight controllers who require Transport Canada medical certificates for their aviation permits, licenses, or ratings. So then this doesn't include drone pilots. Okay, forget everything and have your joint, I guess. But then why does this pop up in a recency quiz for the drone license? Are you on duty when you're flying a drone commercially, like when taking pictures of a house for your local real estate agent? Are you under the influence after smoking weed and for how long? I personally would be just as concerned knowing that there are people flying their drones while stoned as I would be with drunks flying theirs. Why isn't there a clear rule in the CAR that covers this? Well, at least there is this question in the Q&A. Is the 28-day policy written in the Canadian Aviation Regulations? The answer to that is no. It then goes on that the 28-day policy is based on existing cars, which require pilots, flight engineers and air traffic controllers to be fit for duty and free of the effects of any drugs or medications. That sounds a lot like the CAR 901.19, even though that one is not referenced in the answer. So, is this rule just for commercial pilots on duty? I'd be interested to read your comments down below. There is something else. Keep watching. I personally don't smoke or use cannabis, but I'm not here to judge and realize that this substance actually has some benefits for certain people. If you are using cannabis, even occasionally, please leave a comment. How do you deal with it and how long you wait before flying your drone? Just for curiosity's sake, I consulted the US aviation regulations and they're not any better, except perhaps when it comes to alcohol. Interestingly enough, our American cousins only have to wait eight hours after consuming alcohol, but they have a specified blood alcohol level of 0.04%, which is by the way significantly lower than the limit for driving a vehicle, commonly 0.08%. For cannabis, which is still illegal in most states, it says nothing at all. Part 107 prohibits a person from serving as a remote pilot in control. 
person manipulating the controls, visual observer or other crew member if he or she is using a drug that affects their mental or physical capabilities. I'm sure cannabis as alcohol and other drugs affects different people in different ways. Is a 28 day rule unreasonable? Think about it. It would basically mean you have to decide between one or the other, flying or smoking or whatever means of consumption you use. The Canadian aviation regulations consider us, drone enthusiasts, pilots. The exam we have to pass to get our hands on the advanced license confirms that. Set me straight. Does the 28-day policy apply to drone pilots or not? Why it isn't in the Canadian aviation regulations is beyond me, but listen to what Sarah found. There is an aeronautical information manual, or AIM, from Transport Canada. It's in there. Part 3 is for drones. Go ahead and read the paragraph on the fitness of crew members on page 437. It clearly states that all aircraft pilots and flight crew members, including RPA pilots and visual observers, must abstain from cannabis use for at least 28 days when conducting operations with a drone. It only makes sense, doesn't it? Oh no! Thanks for watching up to this point. Oops. By the way, I am an Amazon affiliate. There are all kinds of great gear and drones on sale now, this close to Christmas. And I put some links down below the video. So, make my day and place an order now. now. I'll see you in the next video.